Yo, what's up? It's your boy Currency365. Hope you guys are doing well. Legends never die. They stay in our hearts. Uh, if you want to support us, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and also you can come down here and hit the join button uh, under the video uh, or in our channel uh, section. And you can also join our Patreon, patreon.com slash currency365. And uh, we also have Cash App and also PayPal uh, for support if you want to sell some seeds. Peace out. God bless. Enjoy the video and keep the movement going. Legends. Bye. At what rate they're fighting this war and how he's saying from today, from us giving Ukraine 61 billion in aid and we didn't give it all to them at once you know it'll it'll be in chunks and pieces and the type of hardware that we're given that russia has a short fuse of about two years so if we keep giving ukraine aid russia um for the most part you know that the, they won't be able to sacrifice more than two years that's on the line that's on the line. So let's go to, let's switch to Asia, or I'm sorry, China. I'm gonna, you guys, I'm gonna do another audio and I'm gonna filter out some of the names that um, I'm reading that I, I can't give you, but there's names that are public that I can give you. I just wanna make sure I, I don't do this incorrectly and I give you the names that I'm able to give you. But let's do the let's do the ones for Taiwan. So what is the predictability of Taiwan? Trump wins or Biden wins? All right, it's gonna be exactly the same because both are anti-China um, attacking Taiwan. So let's, let's just go over some names. Several individuals have mentioned or predicted that China, um, the attack on China by 2027. So here's a list of the key figures who have discussed this timelines. And the PowerPoint that I have goes through every word, shows all the maps, what they point out, everything that you could possibly find. All right, General Miley. Well, he didn't predict an attack. He stated that China wants the ability to invade and hold Taiwan by, by 2027. All right. Admiral Philip, uh, Phil Davidson, as a former head of the US Indo-Pacific Command, he testified in 2021, that China could try to take Taiwan by force in the next six years, which would be by 2027. Joseph Wu, Taiwan foreign minister, expressed concerns about potential conflict with China in 2027. All right, J, uh, uh, Xi Jinping, uh, uh, while not predicting an attack, uh, US intelligence reports that Xi, who's the head of China, has ordered Chinese military to be prepared for the annexation of Taiwan by 2027. <laughs> you guys start to see a pattern here? <laughs> so it it doesn't matter if Trump or Biden wins, you know, that has no, no, one way or the other, this is gonna go down, all right? General Mike, um, and I've, I've, I've chopped this name up, it's M-I-N-I-H-A-N. Uh, Minihan, I hope I'm saying that right, although he didn't specifically mention 27, he predicted a conflict could occur in 2025 to 2027. <laughs> so you guys got to understand, all right, these names that I put out there, and you have Xi himself. These guys are, are the, the best information that you can get on what a military can do to us or uh, attack Taiwan or whatever, you know, the apex, all the agencies combined. At all bottlenecks to these guys. They get the best information there is in every single one of them is 2027. So you need to adjust. You need to, you know, how will this work? How will this, you know, what do you need to do to prepare your family? And that's all this information is about. Like I said, I'm not trying to make a political statement here. When I talk about Trump, I'm talking about just strategy. From a political point of view, I'm a I'm an ultra conservative. You guys, I'm a you know born you know born and bred Lutheran, baptized in a Lutheran church, Protestant, 
conservative my whole life and I'll never change. All right. So that's, you know, it, it, you know even though you have Bannon and those guys, it's a completely different crowd, but there's a lot in common. So none of this is political. I disagree with, you know, his strategy sucks. Strategy is going to get millions of people killed. Mark my words, it's going to happen because I'm telling you right now, Trump's going to get elected. And, you know, yes, he'll get rid of the immigration problem. Oh, that's cool. Great. That's what I want. You know, but um, World War Three, <laughs> it's going to happen. So let me let me switch gears here. Let me I have some more stuff for you guys, I think. Um, you know, that's pretty much it, you guys. Uh, so there, there's stuff here, but I'm just I'm just being so just just do a small review. All right. As of now, we're talking. I don't think there's any. Um, there's still nothing stopping the Iraq Iraqis from expanding their markets and um, adding value to the currency. All right. I do want to add one thing that the 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 part that I was talking about earlier about someone coming after me. Well, one of the statements I made, and this is 2011, was that uh, Turkey. So Turkey went through a reevaluation process. All right. And I, I can't remember. It's like, um, it took them like eight years to go through that process. And at the height of their inflation, they were at 75% and, uh, uh, you know, their inflation was at 75%. 75%. Well, they started doing, they had different policy acts and stuff like that, doing different, uh, put stuff together. And then it came down to where their inflation was 8%. And then they they actually um, re-denominated their currency. All right, so they're, you know, a rocket go through that. They could they could same thing. They could start the inflation should could start to go down and then not revalue like they said they're going to do. But the sooner or later they're going to have to do it. That's the whole purpose of doing it. That's the point. But there's a difference between, so the person who came after me and said, well, you know, that Iraq, or I'm sorry, Turkey actually revalued at 8%. No, they uh, went through a re-denomination process at the end of that process, but their inflation was 70, you know, 75%. So you're wrong. Nice try, by the way. And that's what, they, and that's what these, these guys were trying to do. They were trying to take pieces that people couldn't put together, um, but you guys can... Go to any AI, Google it or whatever, you'll see the inflation was 75% and more. And then, you know, it took them a few years to, to get it down, but I think it was 8%. They actually pulled the trigger and re-denominated. But the whole point was to get their, the inflation down to a point so that they could, could re-denominate. So the guy was, you know, I said 75%. He's like, well, no, you're wrong. I said, no, no, I'm not wrong. <laughs> so here's the issue with that. I wanted to point this out because a lot of you have been asking me questions about that, and that makes me happy. All right, that was a real market inflation. They 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 couldn't their their market was stagnant. They couldn't boost production. They couldn't boost sales. Iraq doesn't have that problem, ladies and gentlemen. They have energy. Everybody wants their energy. When their currency was at three dollars plus. They had less customers than they do today. Think about that. So where's the inflation coming from? The inflation is coming from policy. It's artificial inflation. So that's why we do policy watch. One more reminder. We're watching, you know, you don't need to watch their markets. Their markets are fine. The markets are stellar and kick ass. What are they selling? They're selling energy. They're selling a ton of it. They're not selling less. They're not, you know, there's no threat for them to sell less. There's only in the future of them selling more and more and more. But the currency that you and I have does not represent that true market. It's artificial inflation. Turkey did not have artificial inflation. It took them all those years to go from 75% inflation. 
I think it was actually 79% inflation. But anyways, we'll just use 75. 75% inflation down to 8, and when they did 8, they re-denominated. Right? Iraq already re-denominated, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you and I ended up with their currency. And they might they might change um, the denominations later on down the road. We've talked about that again and again and again. But, you know, it's policy that will change the value of Iraq. You don't need to look for their markets. And the reason I'm, I'm answering that in that context, because people keep saying, it's like, what does Iraq have to do market-wise? Like, you know, um, I'm worried because there's this green, all this new green tech out there, and you won't need Iraq's. You guys, that's not going to stop these oil. You know, they just, they just lower the prices of energy. And it beats the, you know, it, the, the, so you have a cost, right, of, of solar panels and all that stuff. Well, if you lower the, the, the cost of using fossil fuels, then nobody can compete against it. They're, they're not going to just, people aren't going to just switch off because it's a, some type of moral imperative or anything like that. And they want the, the best deal that you can get. So, so the whole Middle East, OPEC, you know, um, all these oil giants have that card in their deck to play. So if, if there really is going to be a major push from, um, you know, the, the, the greenies on getting rid of, rid of fossil fuels and, you know, there's a, it's, it's like, okay, this is about to take over. You'll see the price of fossil fuels go down. That's how you compete. We haven't seen that, have we? We're not about to see that. We're not about to see that. We're, we're nowhere close to seeing that. So um, you don't need to worry about that. But a rock, its inflation is market, it's policy driven. It is not market driven. It is policy driven. All these other countries had to do with their, it was, it was a true market rate. If you look at the end of two, uh, uh, World War II, you know, uh, because people are pointing out, like, look, after World War II, Germany was in the same situation. No, they weren't. Nobody was trying to cheat back in those days. You know, their, their inflation was real. They're, they're, we had to build their production back up. So that's what we did. We, when we rebuilt Germany and we rebuilt Japan, and don't let anybody tell you that we didn't, we did. We baked into those systems the U.S. dollar and and um, and our economic system. You know, that's why the dollar is dominant, specifically because of that. So there's there's a few clowns out there running around saying, "No, Germany, we didn't rebuild Germany. Germany built Germany. We built Germany. We built Japan. So um, we built most of Europe. We built most of Europe. So it might hurt, might hurt your feelings. It might hurt your ego." But the, the reality is that, you know, you guys need to look at the, um, the, the policy for Iraq. And then, you know, they, they, if they start peeling back some of the things that keep the value of the dinar down, and a lot of it has to do with this note count. And by the way, we have an audio coming up. I have an audio coming up on specifically talking about the note count again. The M1, the M2, the M3, and how, you know, these anti, I don't know, I don't even know what to call these people that are against us, like it's a religion or something like that, you know, how they get everything wrong. And so we'll go through and it's like, what's the proof of, of where do we find the note count at, if you're going to find it at all. And so we'll go through that. But you guys, I, you know, thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening to me today. I, you know, I needed to, I needed to talk about some of this stuff. Um, you know, just so you know, I'm not, I'm not against Trump at all you know i'll be honest with you i'm in the there's nobody who's in a worse position than me because i would love to vote for him a third time but i'm telling you right now i'm not going to vote for anybody anybody who tries to get rid of nato it just you, you know it, you got to be the dumbest person on the planet it is so disappointing it sucks it literally sucks to be me because it is that disappointing you know I, but um, people who agree with them, you know what? You're, you're probably going to get your wish because I'm telling you right now, I don't think anybody can do You know, after what just happened and, you know, lightning Joe Biden, you know, his performance, 
Twinkle Toes Joe, you know, it, 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 these guys aren't going to win anything. So, I, I, you know, before I go, I got to tell you one more thing, though, because I have close contact with Republicans who are in the know. All right. I still do research for a lot of these guys. And one of the it, it's 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 so embarrassing because it's so bad for the Democrats right now that they're coming to Republicans that are arch enemies, not just, you know, it's like, yeah, just another guy on the other side of the aisle. We're talking, these guys have been battling out for 20 years. Like, hey, if, if you were to, if you were us and you needed to get rid of Joe Biden, how would you do it from, from a legal perspective? You know, and we're like, you, you, you can't. And you're like, ah, shucks. You know, you're right. We, we, we can't figure out a way to do it. <laughs> Unless he resigns, there's no way to do it. And here's what's even worse, even a worse position for him. That they can't get rid of Joe because the vice president, Kamala, she's polling 100 times worse than Joe. So they can't just get rid of him. They got to get rid of her. How do you get rid of her? They're living, you guys, they're living a nightmare right now. And, and it's, um, I don't know, it's kind of fun to watch. I'll be honest with you. It, it's disappointing that I, I, I won't vote for Trump if he wants to pull us out of NATO. But. You know, watching these guys, you know, they set this up. They put this on themselves. You know, they knew Joe Biden had these problems years ago. And they also knew Kam uh, Kamala wasn't electable. So why, so why did they do that, by the way? Why did they push her to be vice president? Because if anything had happened to Joe, um, she's far left, and she would cater to the far left, and she was, you know, she didn't need to go through an election. So somehow she, you know, she got in there. But now that she's got to go through a, a general election, if Joe Biden does step down, yeah, she's a sure loser. I mean, they, you guys, they simply do not know what to do. So the reports that you're reading on the news, usually usually it's all, but the reports that you're reading on the news is that the top Democrats have given up on trying to ask Joe Biden <laughs> stepping down. Is he going to do it? You got a guy out there that's crazy, who who doesn't even know who he is, uh, you know, waiting to get a message from God. You know, he says, I'll step down if God tells me to. Well, that doesn't, even if you're, even if God does tell you to do something when you're crazy, you don't know crazy. You know, how, how do you know that's God's voice? How do you know, you know, so it just, it gets comical from, from even more comical from that point on. But um, guys, I could be completely off the wall as far as the election goes. I could I could be wrong, but I'm telling you right now, the the math that these guys I'm with have is Trump is up nationwide six points, and that's two points above the four percent uh, margin of error. All right, that's that's massive. That that is massive at this point in time. Do you, do you understand what a swing that is? Because you have the independents that we're not going to vote for Trump. Um, and I, I don't know the exact data points. I don't know if, you know, they changed their minds or they're still not going to vote for Trump. And, but there's Democrats who are like, screw it. I'm not voting. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know how to, you know, they won't give me that information. I don't have that access to that information, but I do know that Trump is up six points nationally. Forget about those guys are showing on the news. And, and you know, there's Biden's not going to. How's the hell's Biden going to make that up? Any combination. What if he got rid of uh, Kamala and brought in somebody else? That's not going to that's not going to help. You know, it's, it's just simply not going to help. So it's Trump's election right now. It's Trump's election. And um, that's not good for Poland <laughs> later on down the road time. But anyways, you guys, any questions on this or anything like that, please hit me up at brightlingcurrency at gmail.com. And I'll have some more audios come up for you guys later on down the road. Um, hey, Tony, but, Tony, real quick. Yes, sir. Don't mean to interrupt you. Yes, sir. It just came over that uh, Trump selected J.D. Vance as his VP. Well, that's kind of interesting because I just read an article where it said that um, um, Carson was going to be his pick. I guess those guys were wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good pick. That 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 that's a good pick. You know, I, I 
you because you had Rubio that was up there, but those two went at it. And in politics, when two guys go at it in the same party, there's always forgiveness. They they both sides know. But um, that's an interesting pick. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. So it you know it'll probably give them uh, uh you know more points above the the six percent nationally. But but anyways, um, you know that's where that's where the nation sits right now, you guys. That's where everything's at. That's where the numbers are at. And we'll have an audio coming up here for you guys pretty soon, talking about the M1, the M2, the M3, the the uh, Iraq's economic report and how to cipher that and all that good stuff. And so you guys, thank you, uh, thank you so much for your patience. And there's a lot of people out there. I know I pissed off, told them to screw off with the conspiracy. I know you guys still listen to me. Because I even get e Bob, I even get emails from them saying, you know, um, you know, but I appreciate you toning down the emails that you guys were sending me. That was the big issue. The threats, the you know, you know, just just cussing me out because I didn't believe in what they believed in. You know, that, that doesn't fly. So that's why I that's why I got in. By the way, I don't regret doing it. You know, it did. It toned things down. It toned things and that's all it was about. All right. So just contemplate what I said today. Prepare yourself mentally. If Russia wins in Ukraine, what, what does that mean? What's the next steps? Four years, and then they're going to go after Poland. You will see World War III. What did I say about Taiwan? 2027. Everybody and their dog is saying 2027. It's not even cool to be, you know, the, to know that because everybody's using that number. But um, so 2027, that's, that's, that, that will kick off. All right. So. You guys, any questions, please hit me up. As far as the moral issue goes with Hamas being in Iraq and, you know, should you stay, that's on you. That's on you. I'll, I'll you know, guys, I'll wait to see what happens and, and all that stuff. Um, but, um, but if Hamas gets into Iraq, Iraq is in trouble, not just, it's oil is in trouble, all right? Yeah, look at Iran, Iran has all kinds of oil. You know what I mean? And they're in trouble because of, of, of the, the ship they're pulling all the time. Well, a rock could be in that exact same spot. It's not about just having oil. It's having access to your customers. And, and Hamas being in a rock is a game changer. That's a game changer. That's going to shift the markets. So all we can do is, is hope and pray and, and, and watch. But um, Bob, yeah, you have anything you need to add or anything you want to ask? Anything you know that I forgot? No, I think you pretty much got it this time, bro. I know we're going to talk more about the M1s all through this next uh, presentation. But for now, I think what most people were interested in because of this last weekend was uh, the events of somebody trying to shoot Trump. Um, but, yeah, I think you covered it all. That's good enough for now. Well, let, let me let me say this. Let me say So, you guys, you know, I, I, I'm sure you guys understand it's going to get it's going to get interesting this election. All right. And if, if I can ask you for anything, beg you, don't get involved with anything. Vote your conscience, right? Don't get involved in any, any fights. Don't go out and shoot somebody. You know, especially this crowd, because you guys are believers, right? We are not of this world. Our God is not of this world. And I'm not going to partake of any of that type of evil absolutely refuse to do it thousand years from now the republican party the democrat party all this bullshit won't even be here and what will all the action all the hate all the all the emotion it'll be for nothing you'll just be embarrassed just get the popcorn out and watch because it will be interesting but do not partake in evil don't get wrapped up into it anyways thank you everybody god bless